good morning, um, Tottenham Hotspur fans. This is Harry from Har Sorry, this is Harry from Hotspur TV. Uh, as you know, today, guys, it's deadline day, um, which also coincides with my birthday. But let's forget that for a minute. <laughs> um, so yeah, Spurs after 31 days have finally signed Pedro Porro. It's basically a done deal. He's gonna have his medical today. But yeah, I want to go on to something completely different now because <coughs> Porro took us, like I said on yesterday's video, 30 days to happen. 30 days to sign one player. And now we find out this morning that it's a loan with an obligation to buy. Which, obviously, this is very Spurs this time. All the payments are now for Kulisevsky and um, yeah, Porro as well. They've all been pushed to the summer along with maybe a few others that I can't think of on top of my head. So this seems to be the style, a loan with an obligation to buy it. But doesn't this raise like a lot of questions in terms of like Conte's future, number one? It's a loan deal. So if Conte doesn't stay, then they might not make it permanent. Sort of like with Kulisevsky in some ways, because I think Kulisevsky might not even stay at Spurs. Just this my opinion. But to me, the way this transfer saga has happened brings up more red flags than people actually realise. So I've realised two things with Spurs' transfer strategy in terms of aimed at us fans and people need to clock onto this like now before they get hoodwinked again in the summer because the same's going to happen again so as you let's go back to the summer right as you notice we signed Perisic, Forster, uh, Richarlison and Basuma sort of early in the, in the window right especially Perisic I think he was one of our first signings and this sort of gives like us and sort of the manager who's there right and Conte is very unhappy right now the false hope that the club are actually going to back him because they got him like one or two players that he actually wants. And I relate this back to the window when before Pochettino left in the summer when he got in Dombele as his like priority signing first. But then the rest of the window was club signings or signings down the C, D list. Example, we went for Bruno, we ended up with Lo Celso. Uh, Session was one they were looking at for a very long time, I've been told, since he was 10 years old. So he was a club signing in the end, not actually a Pochettino signing, despite what you might hear. Uh, I look back to also Mourinho era, and we signed, um, I think, Doherty and another player quite early in the window. People thought Mourinho was going to get backed, but yeah, he might have been backed somewhat, but it's on a very, very, very minimum level, and this is, gets repeated every window. So the manager might get one or one player, or at the very max, like two players each window, and all things considered, we need to rebuild like a whole team, really, arguably. Even if we bring a new manager, probably even more players. But so getting one or two players each window is like the minimum, very minimum backing, which is not the answer to actually keeping a manager. Which is why I think Conte is still going to go, despite Poro joining. And the answer to success on the pitch. And obviously the transfer policy have been over this before, but it's always going to be buying young players up to like 24, maybe 25, for low fees in this market relatively. Or now we like the loan obligation to buy or option to buy process we keep repeating now and with a view to sending him on in the future and Porres again is a good example of that okay he might he might be a very good player but he does fit the policy of the club rather than going outside another experienced player like a Perisic or something down the right hand side I can't think of anyone on top of my head but it's just this I'm just trying to relate it to the transfer policy but with this Porro business again they're going to announce it today right it's going to be left late um, and I think people need to realise that it's like psychological man manipulation, right? So they give us, in some windows, they give us like a little bit of hope. So they'll sign one or two early players, right? That the manager wants, or reportedly the media says that they want. And then we think, oh, this summer's going to be different. And it never is. So again, it's like Groundhog Day, this never is. And then in this window, just like I remember with like Lucas Moore, I think we were chasing him, we got him on deadline day. Uh, ben Skukulisewski was signed on deadline day, sort of out of the blue, but it wouldn't surprise me if the deals were already sort of like happening in the background beforehand, because I don't think two deals like that happened like within like an hour. It'd be very unlike Tottenham to do that. <laughs> but it took us 31 days to sign Poro, right? But what people don't realise is, yes, he might be a player the manager wants. I can't answer that because I don't know enough to say that. But it shouldn't take 31 days to sign one player. And as a consequence, we've left with reports I was reading this morning that we've got what it's twelve thirty now, so we've got eight no, not eight and a half hours, I say like eleven and a half hours, something like that. Ten hours ish to sign us and a half. And apparently now they're exploring it and it's like ten hours left of the window to try and sign us and a half. 
And bearing in mind, because of Poro not being here before, we've already lost points that we could have gained against City and Arsenal, for example. But yeah, but everyone's just being played, and people need to help, help, like grasp their heads around this. They're leaving signs like this late, so we become like grateful that they actually got one player in in January that and one that reportedly the manager wanted, but right at the end of the window. But then we can't address the goalkeeper issue, which okay, albeit that might be in the summer. Two centre halves, so at least we need to get one now. Really, we still need for me a left wing back, arguably, because Perisic is aging. He's going to last another year. Session ain't good enough. You need a creative midfielder. You're probably going to need another forward, especially if Kane or Son don't stay, because it's a possibility with Conte going to leave, right? But it's like we need so many players that signing one player and trying to make us feel grateful about it, like it doesn't wash well with me. If we signed three players this window, like three to four, I don't think we count Janjuma because I, I think that was sort of like a stopgap signing because I think Gil's going to come back anyway. And like three or four players and we signed them within like the first two weeks. I mean, like say Poro was done on like January the 5th or something. We had a centre-half by like the 12th. Uh, Danjuma would say he was opportunistic, so we picked him up. And then maybe we went in for some quite late now. I'd be quite happy with the window. I think that was like a seven out of 10 maybe window which isn't too bad considering all things we did with Tottenham it won't be 10 but like 7 out of 10 the centre half was actually a big issue exploring it so late in the window now which is kind of pointless because we're not going to get anyone good I really don't think we will get anyone good and we need a really experienced leader in that back three which isn't Eric Dyer or Sanchez who both played that position in the past like a few games and it's like it, everyone's been played you, need to, you guys need to realise Levy's playing us all. He's playing like I don't. I've seen it enough times to know that the same's going to happen next January. Same's going to happen. We might not get anyone next January. Same's going to happen next January, and in the summer, the new manager or Conte might get like one or two players he wants at the beginning, and then either there'll be a transfer saga that lasts to like the last day, and again we're going to need like five or six players in the summer, so three players ain't enough, um, and. Yeah, you, you're going to get played again. So realise, you need guys need to realise, Spurs need to realise, you're getting played every window. Like, the manager also we have is getting played every window because very minimum backing, not maximum backing, minimum backing they get is not enough to get success at this club or to get success for us as fans. And then you get these deals like right at the end that try to make you feel grateful that we finally got over the line because obviously, apparently Levy personally dealt with the deal eventually, which is, I think, I think that's just made up to be honest. But it's like, well, just get these deals done, get them done early. But it doesn't happen at Spurs because we want to haggle over a few million, which in the long run hurts us in the league. We lose points. And this is why we're playing catch up every time. And the transfer policy obviously itself is wrong because we just keep signing young players and expect them to perform miracles. Even when top class managers, it's not always going to work. You need a mix of youth and ex and experience in the same size to actually get success on the pitch. It's just, it's, that's the formula, but we just need to go the young route because of the sell on value. Like, Poro is probably seen as a sell on value player as well. If he does well at Spurs in two years, he could be somewhere else. It's just it's how it is. Like, Kulisevsky is another one who I think has the potential to be like a top class player and play for like a Man City or a Real Madrid or something like that. He's that good. But just don't clock onto it. You're all getting played. You need to work, work out what's going on. This Poro deal could have been done like 30 days ago. It's that simple. Spurs are the only team that seems to want to haggle and haggle and haggle over every single deal. Okay, there are clubs out there who do it as well, but they do it for maybe one player. The difference is, though, if they do it for one player, they probably signed another three or two or three before that, earlier in the window, that the manager actually wants. Like, we're talking two or three, not one or two, two or three, or maybe even more than that. And that's the difference. And. Guys, you need to wake up to this. Like, it's just the same's going to happen probably next January and the next summer window. But you all been played, and Horace just played us all again. Not for me, but he's probably played us for <laughs> other fans all again. You see it on Twitter, people saying we should be grateful for Levy, and I'm like, the guy took 31 days to sign one player, and <laughs> in the end, it wasn't even permanent. It was a loan with an option or obligation to buy. So, now I don't feel grateful. I've worked this out already, and it's just going to be Groundhog Day again. I keep using that word, Groundhog Day.